The next thing then is how much protein should we be consuming? And the reason we're looking at protein first is because um, I believe protein it derives from the Greek word protos, which means first, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And that is simply why we're doing it. No, the actual reason uh, we are looking at protein first is because that ha like protein, first of all, is one of the macronutrients of the diet. So it's a nutrient that we have to eat in macro quantities. And it is one of those nutrients that a lot of people are just not consuming enough of, especially considering most people that are listening to this podcast or, you know, people that are being sent this podcast, they're probably looking for some improvement in body composition, some improvement in their overall health and some improvement in their overall performance. And as a result, generally speaking, we want to be consuming more than just the you know, bare minimum requirements for protein, right? However, that doesn't mean that we have to consume this super high, you know, quantity protein diet, right? We want to find the, the number that is right for us, right? And in the literature, you're going to find a huge, huge range of where protein should be at from the, this is just, you know, covers cases of deficiency, anything less than this, you're technically protein deficient. And then anything more than this, all the way up to the top, we have that like, okay, well, you know, the research has shown that this number is not associated with any negative health outcomes. We don't know if, you know, more is better or worse. And then there's obviously the kind of number in between those where it's like, yeah, this seems to work for most people, for most goals, and this is probably where we should be at, right? And those kind of bottom end and top end recommendations are yeah, probably somewhere in the range, again, depending on what research you look at and what numbers you look at, it's probably somewhere in the range of 0 0.8 to 3.3 grams per kilo. That seems to be the range, right? Now, if you're just to take away, you know, fucking 20,000 view or 20,000 feet view of this stuff and look at it and go, okay, well, where should I be at? As long as you're in that range, I would be fairly happy in terms of we're just talking about broad population. However, if we're looking to optimize this stuff and actually, you know, really get the most out of this, I'm probably going to say that most people are probably going to do best in the kind of 1.5 to 2.5 range. And for me, I just generally set people with cal with the with protein intake usually I small or I, I bring that range down a little bit and I'm going to say 1.8 to 2.2 grams per kilo. Anywhere in there, you're pretty good to go for whatever goal that you have. And if you want to really simplify it, two grams per kilo, happy days, you're sorted. Now, that's not always the case. If you are an individual that is, you know, uh, very obese, you know, you're whatever, 200 kilos, you maybe don't need to consume that much uh, protein. Um, but it is something to be aware of that, you know, your body fatness does influence this. And the reason for that is that body fat itself is not as metabolically active as a tissue as the other tissues in your body, such as muscle, organs, etc. And as a result, it doesn't actually have as high a requirement for protein, right? However, there are potentially still benefits for consuming a high protein diet in the obese. And we did an obesity series. So if you want to go back and listen to that, you can. What do you think of those numbers, Gary? Where would you generally think uh, you would put people at for protein? Yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. I think that I, I find myself dealing with kind of two stereotypical clients. The first is the person who has come in for, to our coaching service outside of the fitness industry. They're not a personal trainer. They don't have a background in bodybuilding, et cetera. And typically that person, they have an idea of what foods are generally in the healthy category, but they're not making great choices with respect to their protein intake. So they might be doing a great job of controlling the calories, getting fiber, getting a nutrient dense diet, but their protein intake isn't great. And for that type of individual, I direct my coaching towards trying to get them to improve their protein intake. The other client is the personal trainer or the person who comes from a bodybuilding background who's having, who feels like if they don't have 50 to 60 grams of protein four to six times per day, they're wasting their time. And they're having three grams plus per kilo of body weight every single day. Um, and for them, it would be a better use of their calories to have more carbohydrates to fuel their training. So for me, anyway, I find myself recommending around that two grams per kilo as probably my average recommendation, a little bit higher for my clients who are dieting or find it more satiating or the client who was previously at three grams, who I want to bring down a little bit. Uh, but most people, I think, around that two gram level. I do go a little bit lower sometimes, um, especially if I've set the target of two grams for someone and it's just too much for them. 
Um, but I find that if someone is at a reasonable level of calories, if they're at maintenance or in a surplus, especially as you get towards larger uh, calorie intakes, getting you know a little bit below two grams uh, might be fine. But I think two grams is generally quite practical for people, especially when considering protein timing, because one of the things that happens with a lot of my clients who are trying to gain weight is that if I give them, let's say they're 70 kilos, if I give them the target of two grams per kilo and they're eating four meals per day and they're trying to ensure they have plenty of protein before and after a workout, then they might be getting so much protein from like indirect sources, like their oats, their vegetables, etc., that for them to have direct protein sources, it actually pushes them a bit above beyond the two gram per kilo recommendation. So that's fine in those cases as well. But around there, two grams, I think is my average recommendation. Yeah. Like once you're in that kind of one to three grams, yeah, you're good to go. Like you're, you're, you're good to go there. However, if we're really looking to optimize things, I would say most people in and around that two grams. And again, like I have that kind of bracket of 1.8 to 2.2 grams per kilo, but again, simplify it here, two grams per kilo in and around there happy days, you're good to go. There's a, there's arguments to be made for a lower, there's arguments to be made for a higher. Again, it's dependent on the situation. We're just giving these broad recommendations here, right? Now, carbs, I'm actually going to come back to carbs because we actually want to set other parts of the diet first, right? And that'll make sense in a second, right? 